That's how you do it. So, um, man, what a long, strange trip it's been, right? I mean, we've, we've peripherally known each other for 10 years or so, I guess, since... Uh, yeah, everyone understands, right, that Chet and Eric ran a site uh, called Old Man Murray. And uh, probably you're, you're most familiar with the, the, the start to crate statistic for video games. Um, <laughs> so some applause there. So tell me, so let's start there because I mean that's sort of the, you, you guys have the classic tale, right? You have the classic uh, uh, from the outside and became, you lived long enough as the hero to become the villain. <laughs> So, like the start of all Yeah, sure, just in general, so Old Man Murray, just, just, what made you decide that you wanted to write about video games? Was that a, write about video games? Purely monetary. Yeah, we were <laughs> so, um, super poor. We owned a data processing company called uh, Murray and & Sons, and we named it that way because we thought we wanted to show that we had been around for a while of longevity. So family, the family. Like, yeah, because everything was like, you know, data pro math. Your initials that you couldn't understand. So we thought, okay, it'll be a family like, name. Yeah, like a plumbing company or, or something like that. Did, did you envision that maybe you'd have an established in and then a fake year? Well, just kind of in our, actually in our head, I thought the dad from My Three Sons was Murray, but it was Mick Murray. So we didn't kind of miss it, because I'm not Chet, Chet and I have a long history of getting involved in things that were way over our head, like yes. installing satellite dishes and not knowing how to do that. <laughs> and so there's, all, there's always a, a point where we have to bail or we have to uh, explain why nothing works the way that it's supposed to. And so we always thought, like Murray and Sons would be like, oh, we gotta go, we gotta go talk to you guys talk to, talk to the old man. Talk to the yeah, old man. He'll, 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 he'll the, old man the old man was the pricing guy. Because there's nothing worse when you're a freelancer or own your own business to have to talk money. Yeah. And so we would just always be like the old man. And then eventually they started thinking there was an old man for real. <laughs> and we're like, okay, that's, we're comfortable with that. <laughs> well, that was your goal, I guess, in, in some form or fashion. I yeah. never believe anyone's going to believe our lives. So <laughs> it's awesome when it happens. But so we had that. And we did a lot of database stuff. And the internet was starting out. And we had figured out how to do database work in the internet, and in the back of one magazine, there was a place to buy uh, wholesale copies of Myth for 30 bucks. That sounded pretty awesome. Like, we could sell that on the internet. <laughs> right, you could turn it around. And they're like, and we'll give you a, you, we'll give you a spreadsheet of all of our games. And I'm like, oh, I, I have a database. We can put that in. We can publish <laughs> it on the internet. We can sell games. Let me check with the old man. And uh, literally, that's how it started, is we did Myth, and then it was, uh, we started trying to list the games, like give descriptions of them, right? You look at every website, the weird thing is like, it's different now. But back then, every website was just glowingly positive about every game. Right. And I'm not so, sure it's that different, but... <laughs> <laughs> and we started writing descriptions and we got as far as uh, Ultima Online and just couldn't do it. <laughs> and what, what was the breaking point with that particular game? <laughs> I don't There's know. There's actually nothing wrong with Ultima Online. It was kind of fun to cheese people and troll, but I don't know. It just, we wrote a negative review. Okay. And people wrote in that we couldn't do that. Legally, we were not allowed to sell something we huh? were being negative about. What? <laughs> the, the general internet wrote Well, this is, remember, back in the day, there was not forums. There was right. Usenet, right? Okay. And that's where people posted and got into crazy arguments. And they just no. that what we were doing was illegal <laughs> for some reason that they were going to let... Uh, Richard Garriott, no, and we'd be closed down. <laughs> wow, because he's so litigious. Yes, <laughs> and so we survived that. Well, obviously, yes. And then, and so it, that that was the beginning of what later became. Yeah, really, it was like we started doing the short reviews and just started riffing on. We wouldn't play these games. They were no, horrible. I mean, it was just free associated. To, you know, we didn't play Baron Steam Bears take a bath. Really? <laughs> no Barbie horse adventures. No. Nothing like that. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but it went from there it went from there into a much more formal website you know in terms of, of taking apart let's call them tropes yeah formals are probably a really weird word to use you're right I mean just a more concerted effort to deconstruct yeah or just a yeah that might even be overstating I mean it was just we were gonna tell some jokes and quickly stopped selling the games because that was a huge oh, pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> it was like we were just successful enough that every Friday we'd have to go to the post office with a bunch of boxes of games. And it's like, this sucks. Right. It was, it was, uh, it was uh, yeah, it was just not worth it. But the working on the website was fun. So we kept doing that and 
we wrote a little tracker so that we could see where the IPs visiting it were from. And there'd be five at first, and then 10, and all of a sudden we started seeing some IPs that we could track back to uh, yeah. game companies. Hmm. ID, I think, was the first one. Yeah. And it was, you know, we, were, we went crazy. Uh, yeah, the program would actually play little sounds and certain people games are all yeah. excited. <laughs> so, wait, no, wait, 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 what sounds? I don't even remember. I think yeah. probably sounds from Doom. We just stole them. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was exciting. You know, we yeah. were still doing our normal work, but we were writing. And we're talking like 50 people for a day. Yeah, that, that was right, right. Like no one, right? But and then, then it would have been, uh, whatchamacallit, the 3D uh, dinosaur game. Uh, Trespasser. Trespasser, yes. Oops. Oh, God. And that guy who was such a fan, do you remember that guy? Yeah, the, uh, one of their producers called us and left us a message, not too happy. What we'd done was we took all the hype and then compared it to all the reviews. Right. Um, which they didn't quite live up to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then it just kept it just kept going and going, and then eventually, it, you know, then it stopped going and petered out. And, and it it stopped updating. Yeah. So where was the where was the line where you stopped from, uh, you know, writing the, you know, here are the tropes in video games, and here here are the things that are just too common, and here are the things that everybody does, at, both in the review space and in the making of game space, and it turned into. Chet and Eric want to write video games. Oh, I think we've all, I mean, yeah. Chet and I have known each other, first of all, since, I don't know, we were 17 or something. Yeah. But, I mean, that's always been, we've always been working on some game, just never smart or, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. to actually finish anything. Yeah. Uh, but there was never a time when we weren't trying to write a game. And really? I remember for the, well, Eric actually wrote for the Atari 5200? No, the Atari 400. If you look it up online, wow. when I was 16, With the membrane keyboard. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's something called uh, Air Raid 2000, and it's a, uh, it's on. You it's awesome. It. Yeah, it's not bad. Well, it's got 2000 in the title. Of course, it's awesome. Yeah, it was unironically 2002. <laughs> it seems like a pretty cool title. <laughs> you were sold on your own yeah. title. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. But I think it made it was, me. I mean, it was good. Yeah, I think it was. Well, we're 18. We moved in together, and we, all we did was obsess about some bad racing game on the Atari. Yeah, we, we had the, forever. That was another failed. It was like there's an episode of Taxi where Latka gets a uh, apartment, doesn't realize that you have to pay more than the first month. And <laughs> Every month, oh god, god. just hiding out, hoping that guy didn't show up. To well, my, my uncle built a car lot, and we tried to write uh, software to manage the car lot on my uh, Commodore 64. Yeah, Chet's family did Chet not do it. Long line of uh, of con men and shysters. <laughs> so. You're really laying the groundwork for the prospective writers out here. They're like, wow, I can go far. <laughs> I am so much better off right now than those guys. Oh, my my uncle's awesome, though. He owned a used car lot, a trucking company. Uh, they were going to put him in jail at one point. He got like in the, cup, the front page of the newspaper, but he was too sick. So they didn't put him in jail. So he, he Wow, he that's that. <laughs> also, Yeah, long line of people avoiding going to prison. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I guess for the formal, like, so the, the the question that's foremost in my mind, and it may also be foremost in some of the audience's mind, I think, and this is kind of for Chet, um, is, is really why is Coldstream so goddamn hard? What? Why are you so bad? Seriously? <laughs> no, really, it's tough, man. Are you playing on, like, an expert? No! Normal, with four people who play. 39, the, the tank in the final map? Yes. For the most part. So that's that's a tactics thing. So here's the deal. We made it so that when you go down that first gully, all the zombies come from the front or the back. They never come from the sides. I see. So now that you know that... You're saying I've been not observant. Well, if you stop and you sit there and thinking they're coming, because all the other maps, they come from all the sides. And that one we purposely wanted to have this route thing, to give it to you so that you can control it. Go yeah. ahead and right. get to the top of the, no. the no. gully. That's, that's game strategy. Control. Now we're in a game strategy. Right. But the question yeah. that is kind of tied to that is one of the things that I like about uh, Left 4 Dead is the opportunity to explore your surroundings in moments of pause and have story be revealed to you in extremely subtle ways. So when you guys are thinking about writing a story like that, when you're, when you're thinking about that balance between um, intensity and that moment of pause that creates tension, where, how do you go about, what's your process for going about identifying those opportunities to insert narrative? Because I think at the end of the day, that's, that's sort of the challenge and the essence of game writing versus other things. You have other events to worry about. Well, Left 4 Dead's a weird one because we don't control the action. So we don't know where you're going to pause. 
So what we actually do is we litter the level with opportunities, and a lot of them will only be like 10 or 20 percent. So you can play the map a whole bunch of times, and what will happen is you'll have to be standing next to this character, not be in combat, and then you have a 10 percent chance that it's going to fire. And so it ends up, it happens really infrequently. And that makes it spread out so that wherever you have those down points, we try to have it spread through the map, right? Where Portal, you more or less know where people are going to have their down moments, where they're going to have their pauses, and we can fill in there. And we tried, we tried a bunch. I mean, that was clearly the goal from the writing perspective of Left 4 Dead was that we knew it was being designed to be played over and over again, so we kind of wanted to give you the sense that you'd hear something new, yeah. you know, uh, as you kept playing it. And we thought, uh, you know, because we always overwrite and things are too long and wish we had more time to just talk and talk and talk. And, you know, we even had, I remember talking to Booth, there was this whole back and forth about could we pause the director, because you never, yeah. as the director, you don't know, like, could we pause it so we could just finish a line for an extra five seconds. But the problem was, at some point, players would start gaming that because they'd know nothing could happen during this line, and so we pulled that back out. So all, yeah, so all the conversations, all of them can be interrupted at any time. And a lot of the conversations have different random possibilities of choices, right? And I remember sort of working on Portal 2, and I wrote like a three-line bit. I'm like, that's the longest I've written in the past like three wow. or four years. Wow. Because yeah. you always have to, you never know the future, so you can never talk about the future, you only know the moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, the quiet time was in the safe room, even though you can leave the safe room at any time, we yeah. write like, whole little, little opuses that happen in the safe yeah, room. Yeah, so if you sit there, they'll play, but if you leave, they, they get, they just, you know, go away. Yeah, like in Left 4 Dead, I mean, Keith's stories go on for a long time <laughs> yeah. in Left 4 Dead too. Uh, but you can interrupt them, there's always a line that's like, Keith, shut up, when somebody yeah. opens the door. <laughs> So what, tell me a little bit about the, the writing process that you guys go through. I want to talk a little bit in a moment about sort of the challenges that you face, but just what is like, if everything goes well, what's the general process that you guys proceed through in terms of writing your games? There may not be a process I'm sensing. Uh, no, there, there is. It, yeah, it little, I mean, obviously Left 4 Dead's different than Portal. Sure. And, uh, but it, it starts with some basic game design, you know, Chet and I saw Left 4 Dead in some early form, and we saw Portal in an early form, um, and you just start looking at what the game is and then trying to